My name is Christian Schalk. I'm a product manager. I'm working on AppSheet currently at Google. Um, I, you might recognize my name from earlier technologies, tech stuff. I worked on a product a while back, which was very similar to AppSheet as well. So that's kind of near and dear to me. And I've worked in a number of areas within Google. Uh, but I'm very happy to be here co-presenting with Stefan, uh, who I've been interacting more so these last few years on AppSheet specifically. So he's one of our external champions with AppSheet. So he's got some really cool stuff to show you. So first off, let's talk about Gemini and AppSheet. So at this point, we have essentially two features where we are providing the ability to use Gemini as a way to create a brand new app. So you can literally go into the AppSheet main menu, and when you click the Create button, it will allow you to create something just using Gemini. In that sense, it will you can just tell it. Give me an app that allows me to track like cars or whatever, and I actually have a, an app like that. And it will generate the schema for you. And then you can go in and then change some of the, the schema values and such and, and customize it further. The other thing that we're very excited to show today is that we have essentially, it's in preview, it's a new capability to extract information from images or docs, and then we have some other things that we're in discussion that will we'll send it up to Gemini on your behalf. You don't have to get into the plumbing of interacting with Gemini directly, but we'll send it to Gemini and have it analyze the image or whatever document you send upstream. And it will send back a stream of data, which you can then plug into your application directly. Uh, so I'll run through, do a little demo on how that works, and then give you information on how you can actually uh, send your information and, and join the preview program, if you would like to try it out on yourself. So, let me switch over and I'll just do a, a few things here. Well, let me walk through this one very quick demo, which is really, I'm just cheating. I'm just showing you the Gemini and AppSheet where you can create an application strictly from Gemini. So in this case, I'm actually typing very quickly, create an app to, I can let it run again, to create like a tracking, a project tracking thing. And this is actually using the Gemini feature that we've integrated into AppSheet, but it allows you to build out a schema and customize it. So I'm actually adding different uh, columns and such. And then once you get satisfied with what you want, you can click Create App, and then it will generate an entire app that you can use. So definitely very cool stuff. If you want me to run the video again, I can do it. It's, it's a bit fast. But bottom line, it's a relatively straightforward feature. We're always looking for feedback, and it allows you to create an app very quickly without having to manually define a data source or schema, a spreadsheet, or whatever. Before doing a demo, I'll just give you a quick heads up on the, the overall roadmap that we're looking at. So right now, we have the ability to analyze images. Um, we just rolled out the uh, PDF capability, so I can upload a PDF document and have it pull out or analyze the document and then provide like data stream coming back from Gemini and put them directly into your application. And then we're also working out different ways to say, you know, categorize or prioritize a request document, like literally like a, a, picture, a picture of like a, a sheet there, and then you can deduce from that and create a, an actual extraction from that. Also, we're very intensively looking at customer feedback. So we have a number of like engagements, like we actually had our UX person reach out to stuff in and go through like how to actually uh, glean like the best way to continue to uh, improve this feature. Uh, we also have a hackathon coming up in Europe uh, next week that will be engaging directly with one of our main customers that will get further information. So we're definitely looking to get customer information, get some hands on it, and continue to learn from their experiences. So Christian, yes. I have a question. You just showed extracting data right out of the AppSheet app, out of the box, no additional configuration. You just set up the automation, and in a few minutes, you have an app that can be out in the front line, leveraging generative AI to automate processes in, in just a few minutes. No yeah. additional authentication, no Google Cloud Project set right. up, nothing, nothing like that. That's correct. Um, so we were toying around, should I just create an app from scratch or just show like an existing app? And so we ended up looking at like, well, yeah, only th I have 30 minutes. So I'll show you an app that's built and then we might have some time to tweak a little bit. Um, but yeah, what the answer is a straight yes. It's no code environment. Um, you do have to go into an automation or a bot as, as if you know AppSheet and, and add a little bit of like functionality such that you can tell it which fields you want to extract from Gemini and where to plug them in into whatever data table or model that you want. And other than that, it's relatively, you know, it's just as I described here. So, yes. So I have here an app that we're going to use to play a little game, a little AI-powered app sheet game. 
Uh, who has used an app sheet app before? So you made one. We got a couple of users in here. Well, now everybody's going to get to be one. Welcome to the club. It's the best. OK, looks like everybody's still kind of grabbing them. It should be opening your web browser or the app sheet app if you have it installed. And hopefully, it's prompting you to create a player name and submit your email. I'm going to show you the first part of we're going to use two different AI models in this game. Uh, this is my game admin screen. Wow, that is huge. OK, we're way up here. Um, because we talked a little bit about how AI helps us in our laziness and also sometimes our lack of creativity, uh, I thought, you know, creating a scavenger hunt game requires to identify the things you want to find in a place. And I don't necessarily always have the best ideas. So I'm going to ask uh, a text model, what type of things might I find in a uh, presentation room or presentation hall? And I'm going to find three different items. So I'm going to save this, and it's going to start creating this game for us to play. It is going through App Script, making a call to Vertex to a simple text model to return three different things. OK, we see podium, microphone, and a name tag. I think all those things are in here. So we're actually going to play this game. And I'm going to turn the game on. And if you have loaded your app, some of you might see it automatically, some might not. But hit the little sync wheel in the top right if you don't see this game in your uh, uh, play game view. But it looks like we have a few people joining in. we got some players coming in. All right, this is a game. We're about to, about to have a good time here. OK, in order to win the game, you have to be the first person to find all three items and have a LLM validate that this is, in fact, the item that you're looking for. This is a podium. This is a microphone. This is a name tag. Uh, ready, set, go. First person to get it wins. Three items. Oh, we got a winner! Got a winner. Who's that? Anonymous. You're not in here. Where are you? Somebody virtually just, just won the game. <laughs> I won. Just hang and they disappeared. They disappeared. They run away. <laughs> Alfonso! Let's go! We have an expert hunter in the room. Expert hunter. All right, everyone. So you got to play the game. I'm going to show you how you make the game. All right. I'm not going to spend all the time on the app sheet side. I'm going to really explore the connection between app sheet and Vertex AI with app script in the middle. What are the pieces, the recipes that you want to use to uh, get this type of functionality in your app sheet apps? All right, so this is my app sheet editor interface. And this is looking at the bots page. This is where I control automations that get triggered whenever somebody might change data or a scheduled event happens in the app. It will have all the context of the data in my app and run whatever workflow operation I would like to run using the tasks available here. And we can see that we're looking at the validate image bot. It starts with an event on the hunted objects table. So I was actually surprised how many data tables I needed to create a game that's multiplayer. It's like seven. Uh, so I, I'm going to give you access to this app to clone for yourself with all the code behind it and some other demos as well. So if you're like, how did you do all of this? And why do you need seven data tables? You're going to find out. So whenever a change is made to the hunted objects table, I'll actually click on it. We can see the details. See if I, oh, I did. I had a condition. So I limit it to only when there is an add or an update to the table. And I put a logical condition in here that as long as the image is not blank and the image value has changed during this operation. So that's a lot to look at with the this row before and after and things like that. Uh, but it's really an amazing amount of logical control you can have over your AppSheet applications, uh, being able to know what changed between each synchronization of the app for each user. And so as long as they change the image, we're going to rerun the following chain of events. So step one here I've called validate image with Gemini. I'm using the call a script task inside of the app. This will open up uh, my app script project portfolio. And you can see I've selected here one called demo AI scavenger hunt. And it will give me a list of all the functions available in that document, the top level functions. 
And so we're using the predict VQA function, and it takes in two parameters, a prompt and a path. And uh, AppSheet goes ahead and creates little UI components for me to uh, input whatever values I wanted out of that app operation and pass it into the function. So on the prompt, very simple. Is there a object ID dot description in this picture? That's going to get interposed with some data. Uh, is this a water bottle? Is this a microphone in, the, in this picture? And uh, then I'm also going to pass in the image path. Now, this is a text value, this, this image value. Uh, so I'm going to show you how you have to handle for that in App Script. And then it intelligently knows what the return values are going to come out of this function. And I, I do want to wait for that function to return data to me. And this is going to return string value. And it only comes out with one field here. So I'm going to pass that field along in the next step. You could also tell them that if you wanted an, app, an object, get JSON data or whatever, you can do that too. So, but, but yeah. I could. Yeah, but no, no, But no, I don't no. want to. I just said. I don't want to tell them that they can process complex data structures on the return, because that's not, nobody cares about that. Yeah. Who nobody wants to you know, deal with real API outputs. So I'm going to take the data that gets passed out of it, and I'm going to update something on this uh, particular scavenger hunt object. I have uh, the, basically the output of the validation, which is yes or no. Is this, with a certain degree of confidence, a thing? And then I'm also going to change a few different things, like uh, was it found? True, false. When was it found? So if I wanted to layer in some complexity to the game and really find out who was the first, very first person to get the last one in, I could do that. Uh, but fortunately, Alfonso just put his name in there so we could just know. And it's going to make that call and return the data. So let's actually take a look at what this function is under the hood. I've got it kind of in focus here, but I'm going to, I'm going to zoom it in just a little bit. And this is a very common pattern that you're going to see uh, when you're leveraging Vertex inside of App Script. You've probably seen this once or twice already today. But I have my API endpoint and the model that I'm going to, so like line 39 right there. Uh, all of those are just coming from high level settings that I've, I've set in the, the constants file. And the first thing I do is I need to pull back the image data from AppSheet. And AppSheet doesn't store your image inside of AppSheet. It stores it inside a designated file store. So default for all new AppSheet apps inside of workspace environment is Google Drive. So when you uploaded a folder, or you took a photo, it got uploaded to my Google Drive. And AppSheet references it with a relative file path. So I can't just send that file path to Vertex. It's not going to know what to do with it. And I instead need to use the Drive API inside of AppScript to pull the image file and convert it to Base64. So that's what um, the Vertex endpoint would prefer. So that's what this little helper function does. And I got some error handling, probably not as much as I need. Uh, but the, the, <laughs> the prompt uh, here is a very simple prompt, uh, prompt payload. It's the prompt which you saw how I configured that in AppSheet. Is this a microphone? And I pass along an image. And I can also set uh, a sample count or optionally for the visual question asking endpoint. I can also ask it to give a caption for this image. Uh, so it's not the most uh, sophisticated, not a full-fledged Gemini API call, uh, but it does exactly what I needed to do and no nothing more. So pass the image data, and then I handle for some authentication. Um, I'm using a service account inside of uh, App Script, or sorry, uh, GCP for that, and then it's going to return the data, make uh, run the call to Vertex, and then return the data back to AppSheet. So let's take a look at the sort of end-to-end -end architecture uh, without just looking at the code. I start with a picture in my AppSheet app on the left. It sends 
the data I, I uh, specified to App Script and saves the file in Google Drive. The main function, predict VQA, will then pull the file data from Drive and send the data outside of Workspace into the Google Cloud environment. So I just used regular Workspace APIs uh, to pull the uh, data that I'm going to send to Vertex. I'm using a Surface account uh, with Vertex AI user permissions to make the call to the endpoint, returns the data back, and then you know whether or not uh, you can tell what a water bottle is or a microphone. If you want to uh, take a look at this for yourself, all of the clone app, uh, code base, and everything is spelled out in this GitHub repository, along with some other examples of how to leverage AppSheet and multimodal prompts uh, with AppScript and, and Vertex.